the time is 9.34 a.m., May 5th, 1961, Cape Canaveral, Florida. High above, atop this redstone rocket, Alan Shepard waits. Yes, the clock had started, not only on this nation's first manned flight into space, but it had started on a new age in manned space exploration. Within three weeks, President Kennedy had charted our course. The landing of men on the moon before the end of the decade. This is the moon, man's first stop on his way to explore our solar system. To get there and return successfully before 1970 is the primary objective of NASA's Project Apollo. A project that represents the greatest, most intricate mobilization of government, science and industry ever attempted outside of war. An immense scientific program in which the United States will invest some $20 billion before it is achieved. But before men ever stand on the moon, many technical hurdles must be overcome. The steps remaining parallel the steps undertaken the development of aviation. Project Mercury put us through the Kitty Hawk stage in space. Our second step, Project Gemini. The Gemini spacecraft has 50% more working area inside than the Mercury spacecraft has. The schedule, flights to begin in 1964. This modified Titan II with a thrust of 430,000 pounds will hurl two men into orbit for periods of a week, maybe longer. Using propulsion units, they will rendezvous dock This experience is an essential step toward Project Apollo and the moon. Its most urgent engineering challenge, the development of a launch vehicle, capable of hurtling some 45 tons of men and material to a point 250,000 miles away. More powerful than anything produced in the United States or Russia to date. During the Apollo program, NASA will use three different launch vehicles, Saturn I, Saturn IB, and Saturn V. Saturn I is a two-stage launch vehicle. Its first stage has a total thrust of one and a half million pounds. Saturn IB is also a two-stage vehicle. However, its upper stage contains more than twice the power of the Saturn I second stage. The Saturn V is a three-stage vehicle. It has a booster thrust of seven and a half million pounds, enough power to put 80 Mercury capsules in orbit or to send the equivalent weight of two freight cars to the moon. The Apollo spacecraft consists of three modules. The command module is the basic unit of the spacecraft. It carries three astronauts, houses the life support system, guidance system, and the navigation and communication system. The service module carries a propulsion engine for translunar flight. The lunar excursion module is the only portion of the spacecraft that will land on the moon. Each phase of Project Apollo is keyed to one of the three launch vehicles. During the first phase of the project, 
the command and service modules will be launched into Earth orbit. These flights begin in calendar year 1965. In the second phase of the project, the lunar excursion module will be added to the spacecraft. In orbit, the astronauts will detach the lunar excursion module and will rendezvous and dock with it. In phase three of the project, NASA will use a new concept for assembling the Saturn V in a vertical position. Assembly will take place in a building over 50 stories high. Here, Apollo and Saturn V will be assembled. A crawler transporter carries the space vehicle and its launch umbilical tower to the launch pad. When all of the preparations have been completed, the final objective, the journey to the moon, will be attempted. Here's what will happen. Two and a half minutes after liftoff, the second stage ignites. Immediately after this, the launch escape system is jettisoned. Six minutes later, the second stage burns out. Now the third stage places the spacecraft in an Earth parking orbit. Once this is accomplished, the third stage shuts down. At this position in the Earth orbit, the third stage engine reignites, propelling the spacecraft into a lunar trajectory. Reaching escape velocity, fairings are jettisoned. The astronauts reposition the command and service modules with the lunar excursion module. En route, the crew will have many tasks to perform. If mid-course corrections are necessary, they will fire the service engine, putting their spacecraft on the proper trajectory. Their journey to the moon will take three days. The astronauts will use the propulsion system in the service module to slow down to lunar capture speed. They will enter a circular orbit approximately 100 nautical miles above the moon's surface. Some time later, two of the men will crawl into the lunar excursion module known as the LEM. When all is ready, they will detach the LEM from the command and service modules. The command and service modules remain in lunar orbit. Now they make their approach, positioning their craft in the proper landing attitude. First, they will make a reconnaissance pass. If all looks well, they will start their actual landing approach. The rate of descent and flight path will be carefully controlled. Before either of them sets foot on the moon, the LEM will be prepared for relaunching. Their pre-launch checkoff list will be monitored by the third astronaut left in lunar orbit. On the moon, the two astronauts will photograph and sample the lunar surface. Apparatus will be left behind to transmit scientific data back to the Earth. All told, the astronauts will explore the moon for about one day.
When the time comes to leave, they will fire the liftoff engine, leaving the base of the module and all unnecessary equipment behind. Their launch must be timed to permit rendezvous with the command module. Docking, the two explorers return to the command module. Once inside, they will detach the LEM, leaving it in lunar orbit. When everything checks out, the astronauts will fire the service module for the return trip to Earth. Before entering the Earth's atmosphere, the astronauts jettison the service module and prepare the command module for re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Parachutes will now gently lower the command module. Getting men to the moon will take time. It will happen in this decade. Establishing our preeminence in space exploration. The clock has already started. Uh.